The last topic we're going to tackle here with stoichiometry is a limiting reactant. And we've mentioned this before in the lab, but the limiting reactant, as you see here, that's the substance that is going to control the quantity, how much product that we can make in a chemical reaction. One of the reactants, when it's all gone, then the reaction is going to stop and no more product can be made. And so this happens quite often and where chemists will manipulate the limiting reactant. Like if you own a, a chemical production company, then you have to produce chemicals for profit. Well, you would choose your most expensive reactant to be your limiting reactant. So once you had an order placed, you would calculate how much of the limiting reactant you need in order to fulfill the order and not waste any. And you also have to remember that not every, the chemical reactions don't run at 100% effectiveness. So you have to factor that into the calculation as well. Believe it or not, there are people in this world that make their living on stoichiometry. You might not be one of them in the future. Maybe you will be. But it is definitely a valuable um, topic. Now what they usually do then is they take that limiting reactant and surround it by excess reactant. So you would throw extra of the other reactants in just to make sure that all the limiting reactant does indeed react. And so there would be leftover excess reactants. And again, this can happen in like research because you know a lot of people that do research get grants and again they want to monitor how their money is spent and if they have some expensive reactants those would be limited and you would want to make sure you only use a certain amount of that in order to create the desired chemicals you need to run tests and do your research. And this can also happen like in real life if you're looking at your notes packet. The limiting reactant can simply be the stuff that you don't have enough of. So as that example in your notes says, if you're going to bake a cake and you have 10 pounds of flour and 50 pounds of sugar, 5 gallons of vanilla, 20 gallons of milk, and 1 egg, well then that limiting reactant is going to be the egg. You simply don't have enough of that to match what you have of your other reactants. So that is that topic. Um, now we're going to look at it. We did the nuts and bolts uh, activity in class that was to get us started and we're going to stay at the particle level for right now and then we'll move to the mass level where we'll look at and that's what we're going to end up doing in the lab next week is where we'll have using mass mass problems and the limiting reactant concept to see how well our lab goes but now we're going to switch to the particle level and that's the limiting reactant particles practice number one so you can look at that and check out the video that goes along with that.